we're going to kick today's uh, show. We're going to kind of have some discussions about ADP and value and all that stuff. We kind of just did that with some free agents. We're going to just go into regular agents here. Um, <laughs> these guys are not free. Yeah. Um, and we're going to start off with Josh Gordon. We've had quite a few inquiries about what to do with Josh Gordon um, in this off season here. And I'm just going to start off with one super flex question that we got. It was Alex Smith or Josh Gordon, Alex Smith with Josh Gordon or breeze and the one eleven. And to me, it's Alex Smith and Josh Gordon by a landslide. And it's not even close for, for me personally in the, in talking super flex and all that stuff. Like Alex Smith was like QB three to five last year. I don't know if you realize this, but breeze whole game has changed. He's like 40. Alex Smith is like 35 and Josh Gordon, I'm I'm valuing him more than the 111. I right. just I, well, you I would think, be if that's your landslide. Right. But yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think I'm not super concerned about Josh messing up again. I could understand you wanting to ring the register if you carried Josh Gordon for a while, but I mean, <clears> the dude <throat> wants to get paid. He he's already been down the road of saying, you know, I I screwed up. I need to figure this out. I'm going to put this on me. I'm going to take the accountability. And I'm I'm assuming he's gonna at least have to get you're at least gonna get this season out of him. He's at least got to get work himself into a payday before he's gonna try to screw something up again. Right. Well, I mean, not that I'm a psychiatrist or anything like that. I have zero zero background on speaking on this, but I feel like when what I see out of Josh Gordon now, when when a guy gets to telling the examples and says, "Well, this is what I was doing." You know, when somebody says, oh, I'm sorry and I won't do that anymore, that's one thing. But when a guy goes and tells you, hey, I did this and this is what I was doing and gives actual life examples of what he was doing wrong. I was doing this. I was staying out all night. I was doing this. I was running with the wrong crowd and not, not he more. I don't have the specific story in front of me, but he was literally giving the details on where and what he was doing when he knows he shouldn't do it. Yeah. So maybe just a little bit more of an honest turnaround instead of. Oh yeah, I went to rehab and I'm good now. I'm ready to roll. Yeah, and that that oh well, that did that once exactly, exactly. That was the first time and it didn't work. And but now, like Casey said, he's been down the road two or three times. He's been down the wrong road all the way down to the end. Turned around and came back again. Yeah, the, I I completely get it. If you own Josh Gordon in your dynasty league and you're like, if he messes up again, he's gone forever. So I get zero. I pull, I I get it. If you want to turn that into something else, but. Like Casey's saying, he's already gone all the way down there and he's come back. If you could just stomach it, I mean, yeah. the dude goes and misses three years in a row and then he comes out and gets four for 85 against professionals. Right. The talent is there. You've seen him lead the league in yardage, I believe, oh, yeah. a couple of years Absolute, ago. Absolutely. He's just been... he He's he's better than... He's one of those guys that when he's played, he's better than anybody else on the field. Yeah. yeah. He's he, transcendent talent. He it's is. It's undeniable. And I watched the whole thing where he... I watched his interview where he just basically sat down and responded to everything that he could, and it was I think he was in day seventy of his hundred and something days that he spent in uh, rehab, and it was a it was an honest, like beaten, humble dude that was that knew the path in front of him to take. And I mean, we're playing dynasty fantasy football here. There's so many things that can that get chalked up to luck, and 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 it's a game of inches and all that as far as winning week to week, but. I think you have to have the mentality of taking some home run cuts and, and swinging for fences when there's some value on a guy like this because of this persona that he's created for himself, rightly so. Mm -hmm. But I think I'm ready to live and let live. I moved on. I forgave. I'm I'm not worried. I don't. I think I'm ready to. I mean, I guess I'm a little bit worried, but who cares? Let's, let's you got to be a little the concerned. Fence. Yeah, I think if you say you're not worried at all, I just don't think you're not being, worried at all. I'm not right. saying that. Yeah, but I'm not worried enough to not swing. And not you I'm, either, I'm even. But like to, to all, there's only one John Josh Gordon owner in every league. And I mean, obviously, what, so. I mean, I, I, and with all this in account, going back to the trade, like, what are you really doing with the 111? You're you're Taking swinging a on on Taking a guy a who could never be any good. At least I know if Josh Gordon's out there, he's going to be good. This is a, a guy good point. who had a thousand day plus absence from even touching a practice field. He came back and I don't even know what week he came back, but it was near the end of the season this year. He kept himself in that was week 13, pretty decent shape and was able to come out there and, and puts up 12, 12 and a half points against the, uh, the Ch LA chargers comes back and puts up 15 points against green Bay mm -hmm. puts up 9.7 against Baltimore um, and finishes up against 
or uh, sorry, 9.7 against Green Bay, 3.9 against Baltimore. So he has a down game against Baltimore, but that's one of the better. That was one of the better pass defenses in the league this year. Yeah, well, something must be wrong on my screen. I show Baltimore. He went five for forty-seven, and at Chicago, went two for nineteen. Okay, so. yeah, I got, I got, I got it mixed up. Yeah, You're something. Right. Okay, well, but then, like you said, last game of the season against Finishes division up. rival the yeah. Steelers. The Steelers don't want to see this dude do good. Four for one hundred and fifteen. Finishes <laughs> up with fifteen points against Pittsburgh. Now it was week seventeen. They were they were kind of yeah. locked in and all that, but still, he comes out. He puts together a bunch of decent performances with. You know, a not great quarterback situation, a not great team situation. He's on the field around 90 percent of the time with just coming back and and doing well with his time on the field. I mean, I'm 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 fully OK with investing in Josh Gordon from here on out. How well, high, how high would you go? Well, he's to, at 43 to, right here, and I mean, I think that's, I'm more than comfortable taking him there. You trading? You still on? I'm, I'll trade a first for sure. Yeah, I mean, I've, you're, I just said I'll give you. Basically, you're trading Alex Smith for Breeze, and you're trading Josh Gordon for the 111 in this super flex trade or whatever. And I'm a 111. I'll I got a 110 right now or whatever. If you want whoever has Josh Gordon wants to give me him for the 110, I'll take it all day long. <laughs> well, it's. This this is a this is a interesting off season we go into because the we have a very fresh on our minds the Kareem Hunts of the world and the Alvin Kamara's of the world the one ten the one eleven the one twelve the two ones of last year's drafts that just all were awesome home run cuts let's just not forget in recent years those same picks were just absolutely horrendous horrendous so I completely see what you're saying there Casey. Um, the thing that you do with a 111, what are you going to do with it? If you get somebody that's 22 years old, you have some hope for a couple of years. But Josh Gordon, after everything he's been through, dude's 26. Yeah. You know, so there will never, ever be a t- time when you're like not thinking, what if he messes up? But if, you, if you're if you in this spot, if you picked him up last year, he was been on and off waivers three times over the last three years because yeah. people were wondering. Now he's coming back. He's coming back. I'll pick him up. Yeah. yeah, and it doesn't come back, so you dropped him again. So you could have picked him up. You didn't. You didn't. You might not have had him for three years. You could have had him for you know three months. Um, but th- now here he is. So if he's on your team, I can't fault you at all for wanting to trade him. But at the same time, like these guys, I, mean, I got two guys in here in front of me that are really good fantasy football players. They're ready to give you first round picks. I can't fault you for that. But at the same time, this dude, if he comes out and he plays good football, he could help you win a championship. He, he didn't even – there was no time spent in the offseason with any sort of team or any any of that. There was no time spent with a quarterback or any of that. Like, he came right back and just hopped right back into mm-hmm. production. Like Best guy now they, the they did make a very assertive effort to get him involved. I mean, it was right. well, sick. Yeah, why not? Almost how much they were like, we got – Forget every other guy on our team was all about Josh Gordon right Let's now. Make sure we know what we got in this yeah. guy that we're about to bring good back. Point. Yeah. Now the thing about it, we're talking about you. You briefly mentioned forty three though. So now there's two different things. There's an existing rosters and there's new rosters. So going into a dynasty startup with a brand new <laughs> roster and it pit it over at a average of forty three, you're in the middle of the fourth round of a dynasty startup. That might be a little rich for my blood mm, for the I'm investment. I'm good. I think I think you're you're getting a play. Like if if there was no question marks by his name, he'd be in the first round. Right. This is true. This is true. It's a discount everywhere you look the at. The discount it. is built in. That's a good point. That's just, it's just rich for my blood, but I get it. It, w- I get it. it won't be if he finishes as the number three tight end or tight end, the number three receiver in the league next year. Okay, so you know? just he's he Evan or Ingram's even, forty two. Even if he finishes so, as the tenth best. Evan Ingram's never been in trouble with the NFL. He's forty two. He's a budding star of the tight end group. There's not a younger, fresher, better looking tight end than Evan Ingram. And then you got the Josh Gordon who's when he's on the field, he's the best wide receiver in the league almost. So there you go. Forty two Evan Ingram, forty three Josh Gordon. So it's it's gonna be interesting when the startups come around this year. And how high he goes how high josh gordon goes for sure because there's Literally. no chance that it'll be 43 <laughs> <laughs> there's no chance that it'll be 43 come july or august when you're drafting men and, and people are there's just there's been articles on articles about how good josh gordon looks and oh yeah shorts and a t-shirt so yeah because i mean you've already gotten if you get to august and you got a late startup draft and he hadn't gotten in trouble yet you only need a couple more weeks yeah you only got to make it, but if you had that early startup in March, you got to wait all summer long, hoping he ain't getting in trouble. So if you got an early startup, I might steer a little farther away from it because you got a bigger bracket of time to hold. If you got a late startup, I might be a little more aggressive on the Josh Gordon bandwagon. So we're all we're all pretty much in the same camp. Some we, I, I probably maybe I, I have him a little higher valued than you two or Jason. You seem like you're pretty close. I mean, with sure. with me and and Big Co's not too far behind.